Okay, let's look at our syllabus tonight, beginning the last part of verse 2 that we didn't cover last week. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Dr. Ham says the earth was formed out of water and through water. That was at the beginning. It seems to say the bodies in the universe were water. W-A-T, water. This shows it was not a hot, molten blob to start with as those who believe in the Big Bang claim. <laughs> if anything, it was cool. It, it was never hot like that. Think about the water God made when creating the earth and the heavens. They were the same, S-A-M-E, they were the same waters that he used later to judge the world, to later judge the world. Isn't that interesting? He already had water in place. <laughs> he knew what he was going to do, didn't he? Psalm 33 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea together as in heat. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Completely opposite of what uh, the world says today. And uh, I was watching about these terrible shootings of these kids, and... I was watching some of the people and how they're politicizing and everything. And one congressman got on there. He said, listen, this is not time to politicize this. Our nation has gone immoral, and we need to repent and get back to God and get the right moral standards back in life. And he was really great, I thought. And uh, so, uh, but that was a horrible event, wasn't it? Yeah, just makes you sick. Dr. Moore said this, the spirit enveloped, surrounded, and guarded the waters with divine care. He, V-I-B, vibrated the waters, transmitting E-N-E-R, energy, from the creator to the creation. That's what the word move. Dr. Moore says it's like vibrating. He vibrated. And there's a reason for that we'll see in just a moment, I think. Verse 3, and the Spirit of God moved up on the face of the waters, and God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and morning were the first day. Evening and morning means what? What? 24 hour days. 24 hour days. Number one, this explains again that when God spoke, S P O, it happened. He immediately, instantaneously created by divine decree. Through faith, we understand, we that are believers, that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. So, though, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, out of nothing came something, right? And then Romans, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. In other words, they appeared from nothing. He spoke and out of nothing it existed. <laughs> the word light, can you explain electricity? You know, most of us can't. Uh, maybe an electrician has a few ideas, but bottom line, most people don't know what electricity actually truly is. But yet we use it, don't we? Many struggle with the definition of light. Dr. Moore says it has, this was interesting, it has particles that move at the speed of light. It is wave motion transferring energy from one point to another without transferring matter. It is a form of energy 
And in its middle, M-I-D-D, in its middle is light. That's amazing, isn't it? Just beyond comprehension sometimes. Uh, somebody wrote the whole electromagnet uh, uh, spectrum was created when he created light. Number three, light is the single most I am important source of energy and heat, and it would be, I am impossible to have life without it. And that's something. Example, if no light, there would be no transfer of energy and wind, the water cycle, and even ocean waves would cease, C-E-A. The earth would turn quickly cold and all life cease. Perhaps this is one reason, REA, one reason the spirit moved, energized, and vibrated the waters at the first. Maybe there's a reason he moved upon the waters and kept them in a certain moving motion so that they would not freeze, <laughs> in a sense. This probably is why light was created on the first day in creation's process. There wouldn't be any point in creating it in everything else if it just was cold <laughs> without any light or heat. This light at this point in creation is not the sun, which was created on the fourth day. Some people believe that he created the light and then that light became the sun later on. Nobody really knows, actually. This light instantly, S-E-P, separated day from night. Verse 5, it's day and light. What is this light was, I'm sorry, what this light was is not explained. It has the ability to shine and remove only darkness. It was T-E-M, temporary, brilliance, decreed by God, and existed because God told it to exist. This creation of light inaugurated the M-E-A-S, measurement of Earth's time by periods of day and night. Now, since the rhythm of days and nights have begun, evidently the earth was already R-O, rotating on its axis. This gave light shining on one side and darkness covering the other side. Twelve, e 12 hours each, though, right? It gets simpler as we go. It gives the image of going into a dark room to arrange things. Before you do proceed any further, you first turn on the light. <laughs> That's the image it's projecting here of what took place. At the end of the day, God comments on his creative work and said, It's good, right? Good. He inspected it, he examined it, he evaluated. And by doing that, by the way, that shows he's a personal God in taking that interest just by saying it is good. This statement is for us and lets us know that God's work is always PER perfect without any defects and adequate to fulfill his purpose. In other words, what he creates, it's great. Certainly, death, suffering, disease, and bloodshed would not, N-O-T, would not fit the description of good. That's why we explained last week why we don't need that gap, and there's some problems with the gap theory. And I believe... When he said it was good, I don't think he could have said that if there had already been 
pain, suffering, death, and so on. His work was not an experiment, but A.L., always excellent and especially when finished. The word day, again, the context demands a literal 24-hour period or one rotation of earth on its axis. There are 12 hours of light, L-I-G-H-T, on one side, then 12 hours Darkness, of course, on the other side. In just about another two hours, we'll see it go down, right? <laughs> then it's our time for darkness, isn't it? Likewise, darkness he called night. Without the moon and stars, that first night must have been really dark. <laughs> There's no light except the daylight. So that first night must have really been something. You ever been in darkness so thick? How many of you been in a cave? And you go in there and they turn the flashlights off and everything. That's dark, right? Hmm. The word evening. As each day has a morning, so does each day have an evening that grows from dim, D-I-M, from dim to darkness. We call that dim. What do we call it? Twilight. Yeah. I have a hard time seeing at twilight. I don't know about you. That's one, that's one of my hardest when it's really overcast and it's dark or at twilight. I just have a hard time picking things up sometimes. First day. A whole day of creation has been accomplished, had been accom completed. It was a 24-hour O-H-O-U-R, a 24-hour day, morning and evening. There was one cycle of light and one cycle of darkness. And I wrote this beside on my note. Without regularity, day, night, nature could not function because now nature has a rhythm of life. And so do we, by the way. If you lived only in daytime, you wouldn't live that long. Our bodies are in rhythm with that. <laughs> Why can't you just stay up all the time? Huh? <laughs> what, Jim? What did you say? <laughs> you drink too much coffee. When it's dark, they use light. Yeah. And people are depressed and suicide's really high during that time. Amazing. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. We would call it our atmosphere. Okay? And the evening and the morning were the second day. The word firmament. A second separation, division occurs. Our sky, atmosphere, A-T-M-O-S, atmosphere, air, expands to a thin stretch, stretched out space, the heavens, the second, as said in verse 20. Verse 20, the last part of verse 20 the earth in the open firmament of heaven. God also calls for an expanse to separate the waters. The water was under 
the expanse covering earth and waters above the expanse or above the second heaven, you could say. This created a protective layer, a shell, a CAN canopy of water, vapor, a vapor dome, D-O-M-E, surrounding the heavens and the earth. So you have the water covering earth, you have the atmosphere, and then you have the waters above the atmosphere of the heavens. And it's like a canopy. Okay? This atmosphere expanse of breathable gases is preparing earth for life. Most all living things need oxygen and carbon dioxide. So much for global warming. Things grow better when you have more. Both of these are part of the air we breathe. Plants also use water, so they use the combination of carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight to make food so animals and people can eat them for food. And when you remember that at the beginning they were vegetarians, so it's very important there was plenty of vegetation, right? B, it will be on day three that God made all the plants. Here on day two, God is, P-R-E, preparing the atmosphere by putting oxygen and carbon dioxide around the earth. So later, L-A-T-E-R, so later the plants and animals could live because now they'll be able to breathe. Huh? The expanse, and I, I'm wrong on this next point, but some believe this is what it means. The expanse is outer space where the sun, moon, and stars will be. That's partially true. The waters above the expanse are at the outer boundary of the universe. That's what some people believe. It's beyond the stars and that. I personally believe it's just outside our atmosphere uh, the, at the canopy. Okay? I think so. The saying, across the face of the expanse of the heavens, some people say that, means in the AT atmosphere where birds fly. The waters under the expanse are the waters covering the surface of the earth. So you have waters covering the earth, our atmosphere, and then waters above that expanse. Okay? That makes sense? Most Bible-believing creationists, scientists, believe this is when God created Earth's PRO protective canopy. This water canopy made a hothouse, like it is in here right now, environment. The hair in your ears and nose will grow tonight. This shielded environment helped to keep out deadly radiation rays that would be coming from space, the sun especially. This would help humans to live longer, L-O-N-G, to live longer. And Earth became a tropical paradise, P-A-R-A, all over. Climate all over the earth would be warm, having a greenhouse effect, and it did. And by the way, let me just say that the whole earth was covered with vegetation, and I think one of the great proofs of that is our coal deposits. That is the vegetation that was compressed down by the pressure of the water and so on, and on and on it goes, that creates coal. 
This canopy was a water vapor that was in invisible, transparent, so that the heavenly lights could shine through. So that's why I believe it was just above the atmosphere. Okay? So that the lights of nights can shine through it. To help support this, the Bible says before the flood, there was no rain. Then at the flood, the windows of heaven opened, and the waters above contributed to the worldwide deluge. Deluge, how have you say that? Somebody said, where did all this water come from? From the deep, but also from above at that time. Genesis there, where it's underlined, well, just in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open, and the rain was up on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So you have water from below, water from above the atmosphere allowed to come through by God. Interestingly, this canopy will be poss possibly, R.E., be reinstated by God during the kingdom and the new recreated earth. I was, I was thinking about that. And I said, well, that was the scientist who said this, who was a believer. I got thinking about that. Well, they will have long life during the kingdom, won't they? Maybe this will assist. I don't know. I was just thinking out loud. Psalm 148, praise ye, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. He that also established them forever and ever, he hath made a decree which shall not pass. The question is, why does, this was interesting to me, why does air stay around the earth and not, yes, escape into space? Air has weight. W-E-I. And it is kept by an invisible force called Gravity. Isn't that interesting? Air has particles called molecules, and they are pulled down by gravity, so they must have weight. Job says to make the weight of the winds. That's air currents. Isn't that interesting? I thought it was. Evidently you didn't. Now notice verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. That's important. Up on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Here on the third day, we have another division of land and sea. The first day was light and darkness. The second day, waters above and below. And the third day is land and sea. This is the third division that we've seen tonight. As, three day, as day three dawns, the earth was still uninhabited and uninhabitable. Its entire surface is still covered with water, having a shoreless ocean. There's no place to stand on <laughs> or to be on if you were a plant or a tree or an animal, okay? God speaks again in verse 9. God speaks again and in verse 9 brought forth one, 
massive dry continent with one great ocean. This is the first time land appears, A-P-P, -P, appears. Many geologists think today's continents show evidence of once being a landmass that now has drifted apart, A-P-A-R-T. In other words, you can take Africa and bring it back over to America, and you can form all these things into one continent. They just all separated. Some believe they separated at the flood, while there's a possibility it happened at Babel when God judged. So you can take your pick. Now think. That's hard for you, Jim. Now think. At one time, it was only one massive ocean of seas located in one region, all interconnected, not like today's seas. God then raised the earth, the dry, D-R-Y, dry ground up and above much, much of the waters. Only God makes this conceivable. Yeah, that's Tower of Babel, yeah. Peleg and so on, yeah. When the languages and all that took place. I believe that's correct. I think so. I've preached on it before. I think I'm <laughs> Could be wrong. But it's through Peleg. You're exactly right. What emerged, the land, was not slime or mud, but it stated there, dry land to support and to sustain plant life. This was a STAG staggering act. It states, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire, who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep, as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At thy voice, thy thunder, they hasted away. <laughs> on and on it goes. At this point in time, he's talking about. B, now there is earth, sea, and heaven, atmosphere. The ecosystem is ready for life. You see how it's building, developing? Now it's ready for life. Okay? In verse 11 and 12, not only were the rocks and minerals formed, but also there evidently was a thick blanket of top soil. This allows the vegetation, trees, and fruits to PRO produce after its kind other units just like themselves. Grassy was all spreading over the ground. Herbs, or herbs, how you say that. This was all bushes and shrubs, trees. These were woody plants to fruit-bearing trees. I looked up woody plants. <laughs> Has the idea of things growing where there is a forest. So I didn't know what woody plants was when I read that. I said, woody plants. Dr. Morris says, it is important to remember that these plants were not seeds, but as full, F-U-L-L, -L, grown plants whose seed was in themselves. This was for what? Replication. You can bear after your kind, right? This teaches they had the APP appearance of age. They were already mature as if they had been there for some time. They were completely and fully developed right from the beginning, instantly already multiplying. It had its seed within itself. And it was ready to plant that seed itself. 
Don't get ahead of me. <laughs> After its kind, although there are various variations in the DNA, like a dog, there are all types of variations now, right? But a dog's a dog. <laughs> Just variations, right? Ken Ham shows that really well, I think. It is never, N-E-V, never like evolution where one changes into a new kind. A bird doesn't become an elephant. Each kind is limited to reproduce only itself and not to some other kind. This is a fundamental rule of genetics that refutes evolution. 1 Corinthians said this, But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, there are variations, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes. They're all after its own kind, right? This, I'll, I'll get to it in just a minute. These verses also show plant life and fruit trees that were before any animal. What could the animals eat without the plants and vegetations and all the stuff? They were vegetarians. Dinosaurs were vegetarians at, one, at that time. Everything was. Somebody said, you ever see dinosaurs' teeth? When you eat, what do you use to eat a salad? Your fork that has long teeth on it. Isn't that interesting? Evolution says there were millions of years before plants and trees. Of course, that's wrong. Plants also need insects for pollination. But they are not on earth until the sixth day. Now, the reason I mention that, that shows you that the plants couldn't last very long. Okay? Without those insects, that's why it's a 24-hour period and not thousands or millions of years for each day. Verse 12 and 13. This third day brought about the most drastic changes in the way the earth looked and functioned. By the end of the third day, there was a green, G-R-E-E-N, greenhouse paradise that covered the earth. Earth has plants, trees, flowers, and a tropical climate with a spectacular unpolluted blue ocean. This was its first 72 hours. And it was good. Amen? If you go to certain places, I know there are places around the world, but like the Caribbean, and you can see how turquoise or Hawaii, <laughs> how turquoise there are waters, and you, it's just beautiful, or Lake Mead even. <laughs> it, just, it looks beautiful. Can you imagine what this looks like? Okay, come down the stretch here. Some of you go and sleep on me. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament, the atmosphere of the heaven, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be the lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. That would be in the universe. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. 
On the fourth day, God made the sun, moon, and stars to give light upon the earth. Now, I know about the moon, but the stars, now because of different reasons why uh, we concentrate and we create pollution, and you can't see a lot of these things. But when I went to Australia with Bob Shalato, and the first night I was in this room, there were bugs in there, and I can't handle that. So I went out in a truck and slept. I remember that. We were in this little motel. And I sprayed it. I sprayed so much it became toxic. And I had to get out of there. But I'm sitting there, and it's hard to comprehend. I remember as a little boy... We go to Bass Lake sometimes to fish at night, and you could see the stars. But the stars there were so unimaginable. And I can understand how they give light, because there were so many of them. Now, now we can't see a whole lot. Every now and then on a clear day maybe, but not too often. The greater light, the sun, the sun to rule the day, and the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. The sun is a gigantic body that produces its own light. That's amazing. The moon reflects the light of the sun, meaning it does not produce its own light. The light source during the first three days, whatever it may have been, was replaced with the permanent, P-E-R, permanent arrangement, the sun and the stars. We know the sun gives light on earth, and the rotating earth results in a light and dark period. One rotation is, 20, is a 24-hour period. It takes the earth to go around the sun approximately... One year, roughly 365 days. During this time, the amount of light causes the seasons, S-E-A, the seasons. The moon has an important function. It produces waves, tides, T-I-D-E-S, so that the ocean waters can cleanse themselves. At nighttime, the moon has gravity and the waters move. At nighttime, they say the tide's out. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> There's tides going on. Genesis 8, 22, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. There's your seasons. In verse 16, God made the stars also, just like, oh, just a little comment. <laughs> He's created the earth, the sun, the moon. Oh, and by the way, the stars. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Let me see here. How many stars are there? Just in the Milky Way, they estimate there are 100 billion stars. Now, thank. God determined himself how many stars and there, there would be, and he even named them. And that's something. Psalm 147, he calleth the number of the stars, he calleth them all by their names. That's just what I said. All these things created in the first four days are prepared by God with the view to the HIS history of life and RE redemption that would soon begin on the newly created heaven and earth. The redemption story is going to begin, but he had to prepare everything so it could actually be accomplished, and Christ going to the cross was settled before the foundation of the world. Huh? Amazing. Then, where am I here? Verse 20, last verses. 
And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven, the sky. And God created great wells, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every, now this is important, every winged fowl. Do you underline that? Every winged fowl there. After his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. On the fifth day, God made the fish and the birds after their kind. The first animals to be created were the great whales or mammals. They were the largest animals, we call them, that ever lived. And some believe some of the sea creatures actually were great marine monsters because the same Hebrew word for these whales is translated dragons in later scriptures. That was an interesting thought. We know they obey God. How do I know that? Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. <laughs> Amen? How did that great fish and... I think it was later called, I think, the Lord a well or whatever. Yeah, Jesus called it a well. Okay. And exactly at the right time when he's thrown overboard, they were obeying the Lord's command. And then, notice too, the birds were created. God does not tell us all the specifics, but gives us the big picture. We do know that birds obey their creator. And the ravens brought him, Elijah, bread and fish, flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. How did those ravens know to take bread and flesh to Elijah? Do you think God was there and kind of moved in him and said, get there? No, evolutionists believe dinosaurs evolved into birds. Crazy, that's your word. So when you see a bird, dinosaur. <laughs> if you believe in evolution. The Bible makes it clear that the birds were created on day Five, before the animals were created on day six. Hello? The sea creatures, land fowls, remember that? Now this is going to help you. And flying birds are told to multiply and fill the sea and the earth. Also note verse 21, it states every winged fowl. Not all birds fly. God put DNA in birds with different variations, making most fly, but some don't. Always after their kind. Dr. Ham says this, we know the land fowl, Domesticated fowl, turkey, and pheasants, and all interrelated are all interrelated. Chickens are DES descendants of those land fowls that God originally created. As both land and flying birds were told to multiply on the earth, they would lay their eggs so the next generation would be produced. So we can say the chicken, meaning the bird, came before the egg. Amen? 
I solved that question. Thank God. I thought that was interesting, though. <laughs> so what came first? The chicken that had within itself to reproduce itself. And the land ones, the land ones, a chicken, a chicken. <laughs> but the first was the chicken. Just like the plant was a plant. Okay, I'm going to let you go just 10 minutes early. Now, don't forget this when I go over a little bit when I'm speaking. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you uh, and that you made the stars. What a statement. And uh, Lord, as we see this universe, this planet, this place called Earth coming into existence and the way you're going about making it ready for life, and uh, God, it's amazing. You're amazing. And, uh, but also you're personal. You're the one who went to the cross for us, died there, shed your blood, and rose again. And because of that, we can have eternal life with you. And I can only imagine what we'll see one day when we go to heaven. It's hard to comprehend. But we look forward to that day and that hope that we do have. Be with the people, give them safety as they leave. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me just